Hey everybody, this is Nick. I had a real quick tip for you on the ESX, something that I just picked up recently um, when dealing with this little thing is uh, I've been looking at getting an MPC and I kind of was enamored with a little bit of the tricks that you can do by slicing a, a loop and you know piecing it over a few different pads so you can trigger it as a sequence over a few different pads. Um, of course, the cord can do a lot of that stuff, which I like but I just had to figure out how to do it. Um, so what I've got here is I've got a pattern, I've got a loop, I should say. That I want to play in reverse. And I want to play that um, in real time, kind of an improv sort of way. The problem, of course, when you reverse a sample is you're playing from the end point at, at all times, every time you hit it. So, what I had to do is I had to make use of the motion sequences. At the very beginning, um, and you can see there's no notes programmed into this pattern for that, that particular pad. It's only a motion sequence where at the very beginning I've got a motion value of 64, which is the second half of the, of the, of the riff. It's a two bar or a four bar riff um, or with two chords. So it's the second half of it right there. And then we go into bar three and I set the motion value for zero. So this is something that's been done before. I think other people have shown this to you maybe in YouTube videos, but the thing I didn't realize is that it actually makes the pad actively re-trigger it at that point in time. It's not just re-triggering it through the sequence, um, which allows me to, to basically play it live and have it alternate between those two different halves of the loop, uh, like this. So it's playing the second half here. Back to the first. So that's one of the cool things that I figured out. Um, as well as the fact that with the part mute, I always thought that you had to part mute it and part unmute it, which isn't the case. If you press it again, it unmutes it. So for live performance, that's kind of cool because you can do this thing. Whoops. <laughs> Let me unsolo there. Let me start that from the top again. Of course, you can see it can get kind of messy if you're not really practiced with this particular performance. But um, yeah, two two quick things that I learned that I thought were really cool. I've had this thing for months and still hadn't figured that out. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this is something that you don't already know. And you make good use of it. Make good music with your Korg. And have a good one. Cheers.